What's up guys, War here, welcome back to the channel. So today we are going to be going over the Season 28 starters or your Hagrid's gifts. Um, in Season 28, we're going to go over them class by class and just kind of talk about them, break them down, kind of, kind of talk about a little bit of some of the builds and stuff that's going to be coming. So um, as we know, my favorite class of Season 27 is the... Aegis of Valor set for the Crusader. Now, we all know that Satyrs don't get a lot of love in Diablo 3, but this season it absolutely crushed because of the power. So, every two seconds, we got a Fist of Heavens that uh, was casted randomly on a nearby um, enemy as your steed charging, which is just fantastic. It makes the build incredible. Like, you throw this thing on here and you're just casting stuff down for free. Okay. So, that's not there anymore. That power is going to be gone. So we're going to be back to having the increased damage on the steed charge while using and after for five seconds. But now we're going to be moving into manually casting Fizir. Okay, Fist of the Heavens. All right, so this is going to be our main damage dealer. And we have a lot of different, you know, ways to, to build this. But I want to talk about, like, as you complete your... Um, seasonal journey that you're going to be doing for next season and how the agus or agus the um agus of valor set is just really good i don't think it's going to be a very good pushing build because even with the guardians what made this build so great especially for speeds is just that the auto cast was there right now it's gone we don't have it which really really sucks so now we're going to have to manually cast so i want to show you guys real quick how the manual like cast is really gonna work we're just gonna go to the fields of misery so we're gonna get our buffs right and we just have to stop and just cast which is kind of a bummer as opposed to like if we swap this right we have the power and it's just automatically being cast and i can just run around okay so what i decided to do was try to take the build and make it just as simple as possible okay the build is still very gonna be it's gonna be really really speedy and uh, all those kind of things. So, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, dude. Goodness, almost got me killed on camera. Holy crap. All right, so let's go back to town. So we're not going to go uh, too in-depth about, um, you know, how the build works and all that stuff. We'll save that for a build video after Season 28 officially releases. So there's a couple different ways. I think this is going to be a very good build if you are Crusader main in Season 28 because the build is very strong. It's very speedy, so you're going to be able to use this to get some of your other builds and variants and just farm things um, in season 28. I think it's gonna be a very good like T16 farming build. Um, I don't know how well it's gonna do on 90s when you have to manually cast. I still think it's gonna be good for just 90s at the best. But let's talk about some of the strengths here. So the Aegis of Valor set is very fast. It's very strong. It utilizes one of the best movement abilities in the game in Steed Charge, just plowing through enemies. And I think for T16, there's a couple different ways to build this, okay? So uh, one of the things that makes this build so great is that the resource cost here isn't a lot. So you're mainly going to be Steed Charging and just casting Fist of the Heavens. So the Provoke as well as the Laws of Hope are really just your speed buffs to go on top of Steed Charge. And then you have a little bit of Iron Skin for defense as well as, of course, Akarat's Champion. So you have your initial build here, which is really fast with the Armed Guards, right? And then we have Captain Crimson's to just reduce all the costs, especially since you're going to be manually casting now. Because when the ability's on here and you're casting for free, you know, you're not, you're not spending any wrath. So, but now that we're casting, you know, the resource cost here is great. Another way you can really do this though, is swap this out. You can put these in here, right? You could do this. This is also very strong if you really wanted to, or what you could do is uh, swap out the chest here and then throw the um, Aquila in for just more damage reduction if you really feel that way. But in T16, you're not really gonna have to deal with that. So. The two best variants are going to be this or with the Captain Crimson set. Um, if you really wanted to, you could also drop this and go Warzian, drop this, and instead of Captains, you do the Boots plus Gold Wrap, which is also very, very strong. And then if you do that, what you do in the um, cube here is you swap this for Obsidian Ring of the Zodiac, which is what we have there. So it's a very good wrap, okay? But this is going to be your your Hadrian's gift if you are playing satyrs next season 
Uh, we didn't get anything in the PTR for Satyrs, so we don't really get to see any changes, and we're not and we're not for sure if Blizzard is actually going to do any changes for the Crusader. But I really hope that they do, because um, this build was just an absolute blast to play this season, and I'm still crushing it the rest of the season. I'm still trying to get my wings, and we're still just crushing along. So. But this build can be very resilient, especially with the Guardian set in there, which is very, very strong. And then your rings and amulets, you know, you're going to always run squirts. And then these two can really be mixed up. You definitely want Stone of Jordan because you're all elemental. But CoE can be swapped out for, like, Obsidian to make sure that we're trying to keep, you know, as much uptime on Akrat's champion. Um, you have a lot of options here with this build. But I think overall, it's, gonna, it's not going to be the best starting set. Um, in season 28 that's probably going to be the necro or the demon hunter which we're going to talk about in other videos but i wanted to break this one down we're going to be doing all of them guys and just my thoughts on it but i think agus of alar is still going to be a solid t16 farming build for you to do bounties um be able to get a lot of uh, resources uh, your mats and get all that stuff to be able to do other builds so the build is going to be very fast for that so i think it's going to be one of the best but uh we'll see we'll see maybe blizzard will give us some changes going into um season 28 when it releases and give us some cool changes for um the satyr because really it, besides agus there's not really any builds that are super strong for the um <laughs> for the uh Crus crusader unfortunately uh, you could do the the condemn, you know that that could be okay. I really thought that using all the different, um, you know, what is it? Using the uh, where are they? Using the flanix would be really cool, and it was strong when it first came out, but they nerfed it so bad it's not even viable. So, but that's my thoughts on Aegis of Valor, guys, for season twenty eight. I think it's gonna be a really good um, set if you are a Seder main um, for your Hadris gifts. So. Like the video if you did enjoy it, guys. We're going to be talking more detail about this class when the season releases. Make sure to comment down below and what do you think about the Aegis of Valor um, set being for uh, the Hadra's Gift in Season 28. So let me know down in the comments. And as always, stay gaming. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.